So we're gonna go through the 144 ceiling brace installation. This is gonna be the reinforcement that bridges the ribs in the ceiling of your van. So this is a great part of the Adventure Wagon Kicks. It allows you to get um, the most structural stability out of your ceiling, as opposed to just having um, things mounted right to the ribs themselves, because you can span the space in between them. So your kit's gonna come with your ceiling bracers, which has four pieces. They're gonna connect into two longer pieces that run the length of the van. You're gonna have five smaller um, orange bracers that'll go on each rib and then one smaller cross piece that'll get track attached to it and go between those two longer bracers. You also need your track for this. So you need your ceiling track. You, so you need S C1, SC2, and SC3. You're gonna have two of SC1 and SC2. Um, along with this, you need some tools. So you want a quarter inch and a 3 16th rivet setter, as well as a drill, um, and then an impact driver for using set screws and things like that. In your kit, you would have received um, some tools as well that are gonna help hold these bracers in place, as well as some rust prevent, um, your hardware, so quarter inch and 3 16 rivets. Um, and then you also need a straight edge and a Sharpie or pen of some sort to mark your true center. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is grab the little cross pieces, so the ones that don't have any like um, threaded holes or anything in them, and you wanna mark your true center. So each piece has a little index on it that shows the center of that bracket. So you just wanna use a straight edge. We use a 90 degree here because it makes it easy, and just draw a line all the way down the piece. This is gonna make it easy to line up with your center when we get into the van. On your longer cross piece, it's gonna go right through the Adventure Wagon logo. So you go right through in between where those two um, sections of the A match. We're gonna move on to our main ceiling bracers now. So you're gonna to wanna to line up your pieces of A-frame, so the orange pieces with little brackets. You're gonna have two forward pieces, which are identical on each side, and two aft pieces. One is gonna have a passenger, so a P on it, and one has a D on the underside, indicating your passenger and driver's side. So once you have those lined up nose to tail, um, you know the forward edge is the one with the bracket that doesn't move, and then your aft edge is the bracket that does move but only has one side to it. When you have your ceiling bracers lined up, you're gonna grab your track. So you'll have an SC1 and an SC2 on each bracer. Um, your SC1 is gonna be towards the forward edge and then your SC2 is gonna be towards the aft. These are gonna attach your two pieces. So your track's gonna extend past one piece and onto the other to connect them. Having the track on there now also keeps the piece from bending or swaying or moving at all when you're putting it in. So it makes it easier to keep things parallel. A reminder here that you're using your M630 bolts. So these are a little bit longer than the ones you used on your walls. This allows you a little bit more play when you're putting ceiling panels in because you are working overhead and it can be a little bit more difficult. Once you have all of your bolts into the track and secure, you're gonna go through and loosen the little tabs on each bracket. So you wanna loosen up these bolts just to make those brackets move freely. These are gonna allow us to account for variations in the van and attach to the ribs as they need to. Every van can differ a little bit in the size and shape of those ribs. When you're loosening them, you wanna make sure to loosen them just enough so that the bracket will move, but not so much that you're gonna impede your tool setting your quarter inch rivets once we're in the van. Next, we're gonna tape the sections where the little brackets are underneath the track. This is gonna protect the track when we're using our tools to keep the, um, the ceiling bracers in place. So we when we do this, we do it on every section where there's a bracket. You're only gonna have two tools per side. So in theory, you could just do the ones that you're gonna use the tools on, but you often have to move the tools to different sections and things like that. So doing this ahead of time just makes it easier once you're in the van. We do a couple layers of tape and you also wanna make sure that the tape goes around the edges of the track, but not underneath the orange A-frame. After that, we're gonna move into the van and start measuring our true center. This is the most important part of your ceiling install. You may have already done this step if you followed our fan vi video, um, but if you didn't do that or um, you just didn't do it on all the ribs, make sure to follow this closely. Basically what we're doing here is marking the true center of the van instead of relying on the factory holes. The ceiling ribs can shift side to side within the capture brackets, which can cause your ceilings to be off by a little bit. And while the kit has a little bit of tolerance built in, um, there's not quite enough for the variation that shows in many of the vans. So what we're doing here is finding the center between the two sections of the van that capture the actual ceiling ribs. There's a little seam on either side and you wanna measure the distance between these and then mark your center with a Sharpie. Once you've made your line, you wanna go back and measure again from side to side and make sure the distance from that center is equal um, to each side where it's captured. 
After you've checked that, you can get your little cross brackets. This is where our marks that we made on the brackets ahead of time comes in handy as well. Having the line going all the way down the bracket makes it super easy to line up with the true center you made on the rib of the van. After you have your true centers marked on all of the ribs, you can go into your first box in your orange dry bag and your goodie bag. You'll have drill bits. So you likely already opened these if you were doing your wall A-frame, but this is that little bag is gonna have three drill bits in it. It's gonna have a quarter inch, a 3 16 and a 25 64 For these little cross brackets that we're putting in first, you want your 3 16 drill bit, because we're gonna be using the 3 16 rivets. The forward bracket is gonna look a little bit different than the rest. It's got kind of an angular shape on the front. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one in first, line up your center mark with the line you made on the rib, and then you can go ahead and drill the 3 16 hole. You wanna do one side and then the other to make sure that you're not, the piece doesn't angle down at all um, if you do all on the one side. So we go ahead and drill one out, set the rivet, and then move to the other side. You also wanna make sure to rust prevent every rivet that you use in this process. You can go ahead and dip the rivet in the rust prevent if you'd like, it makes it a little easier instead of using the brush. Um, and we don't deburr or anything like that in the rivet setting process since the holes are a little too small. When you set one side of the bracket, move to the other side. Make sure that the bracket is flush against the face of the rib before starting to drill your hole. After the forward um, little bracket is set, you can go ahead and set the rest of them using the same technique of lining the lineup on the bracket with the true center of the van. You're gonna have a little bracket on ceiling ribs one, two, three, five, and six. Next, we're gonna set our cross piece, which is on our zero line of the van or your fourth ceiling rib. This is actually gonna get track um, installed into it, so it's a little bit of a different process. You're gonna have two little holes on the face of the piece outside the logo. These are for set screws, so you wanna line this up with your true center and set a couple set screws in the face of the piece. This is gonna allow us to take a couple steps um, without having to hold the piece in place. Having the piece secured with the set screw is gonna allow us to mark where all of the PEM nuts sit on the ceiling rib. We use a little punch for this. You can also use the back of a rivet or anything that's gonna allow you to make a mark onto the sheet metal. The reason we do this is those PEM nuts have a little bit of a raised edge on the back side of this piece, and you need to open up some holes behind there to allow not only the PEM nut to pass through, but also the bolt. So as you um, mark those pieces, you, after that's all done, you can take the piece down and then we use a step bit to open up the holes. If you don't have a step bit on hand, you can just use a series of drill bits opening up the hole um, farther and farther as needed. You're gonna want at least like a half inch hole um, to allow the bolts to pass through. Having a slightly larger hole gives you a little bit of play so that you um, have some tolerance when you get the piece back up into place in case your mark wasn't exactly on center of that PEM nut. A reminder here to always be using safety glasses, PPE. After you have your holes drilled, you wanna use a deburring tool to get off any of the shards that could um, cause rust later on. And then use rust prevent to co coat the holes really well. Make sure to get the brush up inside there so that you get the back side so there's not rust um, in the ceiling as time progresses. After you have your holes treated, you can reinstall that cross piece. Make sure it's on center really well. You can re-measure here to make sure that everything's still lining up nicely. Sometimes if your holes are slightly off, the piece will shift to um, fall into the hole, which you don't want. Um, so always double check your measurements. Um, you can always shift things or open up those holes a little more if needed. Um, you also wanna make sure that your holes were in the right place so that the piece is actually sitting flush against the rib. If you have any like gaps or spacing, you're gonna wanna take the piece back down and open up the hole a little bit more. If everything looks good and the piece is sitting flush, we can move on to setting our rivets. We're gonna use the same technique of um, setting one rivet in a tab and moving on to another one on the other side to make sure that the piece isn't shifting or torquing in any way. A reminder that you're still using your 3 16 rivets here. So you go ahead and set one in each of the little tabs um, to make sure that everything's nice and straight. And then once you have one in each tab, you can go through and drill all the holes at once if you want or still continue to do one rivet by at a time. After all of your rivets are set, you wanna make sure to take out that set screw, um, one or two if you've got them, and rust prevent that hole. You definitely don't want that set screw to stay because it'll cause your track not to sit flush with the orange A-frame piece. When you've got all of your cross ceiling bracers in place, you can see pretty clearly down the van that everything is nice and on center and lined up. If anything's looking off, go ahead and go back through and remeasure and see if anything isn't um, on that true center of the van. This is the time to make corrections if needed before our actual ceiling bracers are in place. 
After you've double checked your measurements and everything is looking nice and on center, you can reinstall the track on your cross piece on your fourth ceiling rib. This is a really good reference for when we're installing our ceiling bracers that everything is um, parallel and the right distance apart. The track should sit flush if you had that set screw in there on accident still, you'd have a little gap. Now we're gonna move on to installing our actual ceiling bracers. You can use the tools that came in your kit. You should have two per side, which will help hold the bracers in place while you set your rivets and get everything lined up as it needs to be. We're gonna move on to installing the actual ceiling bracers into the van. Note that the side of each bracer that doesn't have a little adjuster bracket is gonna be the forward section. So when you're installing um, the bracers on each side, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to butt that bracket up to your forward ceiling rib since you're not gonna have any room to adjust um, and attach it with rivets. So always favor the pieces forward. Um, when you've got that done, you can use the little tools that came in your kit to hold it up into place. The small brackets that come in your kit are going to hook into factory holes in the van. There's a little bit of play back and forth in these tools to allow for that variation in the um, ceiling rib placement. So make sure that you're not relying solely on the tools to get your placement. You want to um, measure a few times and make sure that everything is parallel and you can loosen the bracket to shift the track back and forth by about a quarter inch to allow for um, your specific van's placement. In the aft section of the ceiling, your track's actually going to go into an opening in the D-pillar of the van, and you have an adjuster bracket back here. It's super important to make sure that that harness is above your tracks. If it's below, it's going to interfere with setting your panels and your rear trim. Getting both ceiling bracers into the van at once before setting any rivets is really useful because you can make sure that everything's parallel down the van before setting anything permanently. Um, there is just enough tolerance and shifting that can happen even just when getting those up into place um, that you want to measure throughout. There's a few different places you can measure to make sure that everything is parallel and where it should be. So you can use your true center, which we use to get all of those cross bracers in place. You can also measure the distance between your track pieces on each bracer um, and make sure that that's the same going down the van. You can also measure the distance from your track to the seam on either side. All of these measurements should be the same from side to side. Um, it's good to measure all three options just to make sure everything's lining up super well. We're gonna trade out our 3 16 drill bit for our quarter inch. The ceiling bracers use a quarter inch rivet instead of the 3 16 It's got a little bit more strength to it since these are gonna be taking the brunt of the force for hanging any um, cabinets or larger items when your kit's complete. We start at the center here because your um, center's kind of set by that cross piece of track. So you can um, butt your cross piece of track up to the bracers on either side so that the track is flush with one another. The forward rib on the ceiling bracers has a little set screw hole on the tab that sits on the face of the rib. You can use this to make sure that the um, ceiling bracer is nice and secure and flush with the ceiling rib before setting your quarter inch rivets on that forward most rib. We're going to set a rivet on one side, making sure that the bracket is pushed up and flush with the ceiling rib, um, and then we're going to move to the other side. Again, measuring it every step of the way is super important here, um, just to make sure that there's no mistakes. After you have your center line points um, attached, you can move on to really any of the other ceiling ribs as long as you're measuring throughout the process. We move from the center to the forward rib. Um, once you have two ribs set that are separated from one another, your ceiling bracer should be pretty parallel. After you have a couple um, sets of rivets on alternating ribs set, you can go ahead and move on and set the rivets in all of the um, little brackets along the ceiling bracers, just making sure along the way to use your rust prevent and pushing everything flush up against the face of the ribs to make sure that it's following the contour of the van. After you have all of your rivets set, you can go in and remove your tools that have been holding it into place since everything is nice and secure. Again, be careful here not to scratch your track, especially if your track is anodized. After you've um, removed your tools, you can go ahead and re-tighten all of those little brackets. Um, now that they're attached to the ribs, you don't want any rattling or anything from the brackets happening underneath your ceiling panels. They all have a little lock washer on them, so as soon as that's engaged, you should be good to go. After all of your little lock washers are engaged on those brackets, you can go ahead and remove the tape from the track and your ceiling bracer install is complete. After this, you can do a really good clear out of the van of any debris and then we're gonna move on to our hush mat and insulation.